It's almost like a jackpot, Jesus. When I need you, I'll go to you. You know, I'll pull the slot machine. You're supposed to work for me. Or I'll rub on the word of God, and I'm going to name it and claim it. And it's like, what you claiming? What are you claiming? Claim some words in that book and live off of it. <laughs> Let's get into a conversation on repentance. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Um, me personally, I got to die daily. Um, sometimes that strong personality gets the best of me, and I have to um, just ask for forgiveness on the regular. I do. But in that, um, I have to learn from my mistakes and not repeat the same mistakes because if you're repeating the same things, then you know your forgiveness is or your repentance is empty. Mm-hmm. So I think um, in order to be truly repentant, you got to come and lay it all out there and say, God, I can't do this by myself. This is my struggle, or my tongue is wicked, or my thoughts are wicked, or you know I really don't like this person. I have evil thoughts against them, or whatever. And you've got to. Uh, fill your heart with something else. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when I get into those moments of, God, I'm failing miserably or I'm insecure about something, which is rare, um, only because, and I I say that not from a a standpoint of being, oh, I'm a strong woman. That's not it. My strength is in God. So I have to keep his word in my ear. Mm -hmm. And that literally means sometimes um, just playing the Bible in my ear, that helps me so much yeah. because then it drowns out the noise. It drowns out the world, the secular, and it brings your mind, it, you know, it's like, it's, it's a reset. Mm-hmm. And so doing that, keeping, <laughs> guarding my ear gate and my eyes and staying focused, um, that's the only way I can do it. Mm-hmm. it really, for me personally, that's what works for me. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, when there's a lot of noise going on, a lot of thoughts, a Bible verse, I don't remember the exact one, but it talks about casting down things in the name of Jesus. So any thoughts that come, just be like, if it's not of you, get it out. Right. Because <laughs> I don't have time for that. But what you're doing is you're pulling on your the strength of the word. You know, mm-hmm. you're like, Lord... You said you were going to leave me with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to need a double dose of the Holy Ghost right about now (laughs) because I need you to come in and clean out these thoughts. I need to stay centered. And it's a faith walk. You know, it's it's something you've got to do on the regular because none of us gets too, you know, so strong that, you know, we can go without them for any stretch of appreciable time unless you're out in the wilderness and he's all you hear and all you see. But for us that live in regular society where we're bombarded, you know, with so much sin on the regular, yeah, you've got to keep your face in the book or keep your keep his word in your ear. By any means necessary, stay connected mm-hmm. to his word. When did the concept of repentance become important to you? Ooh, um, after major disappointments or failures, that's generally um, in, my, in my past is when repentance, it's like, Lord, I really messed up. I mean, that's a big mess up, Lord, and I'm ready to come out of this sin. Call me, help me, you know, and I remember after a really, really hard time um, when I really felt at one of my lowest, but even my lowest wasn't, you know, a point of desperation. I was desperate to turn a new leaf and turn a new chapter. I remember crying to the point where I could not read the word anymore, and so I just wrap myself around the Bible like a child would wrap up in a blanket, and I prayed. And in the morning when I got up, um, I looked like a gilly monster. My eyes were swollen shut, but the weight of all the sin was gone. And and um, I knew at that point that was true repentance, and I had been forgiven. Mm-hmm. And so even now, if I go back to those, you know, those days of, of sin and doing things the wrong way, I derive from them lessons of God saw you through it, and that's part of your testimony now. Mm -hmm. And how do you help others overcome whatever it was, you know, that I overcame? And so that's kind of um, what led me to the true faith walk in repentance, you know, realizing that you're not perfect. And the big mistakes, the small mistakes, you still have to ask for forgiveness. But in that, you you need not keep repeating the same things. So, yeah, I still, I mean, we all have to repent because we're not perfect. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. That's a daily occurrence, but hopefully it's, you know, not as much 
<laughs> but I'm challenged. I'm challenged on the daily because of what I do. I, you get into these situations and you're like, Lord, you know, I want to cuss that. <laughs> mm, Jesus. And you got to call on Jesus. Yeah. So you can't curse and, and bless at the same time. So you got it to Jesus, you know, and it brings you Hold back my to. my mouth, yeah. Right. It's like, ooh, this wicked tongue. <laughs> but, um. But the older I get, the more word that I, I understand. And, you know, I'm quicker to call on his name. Whereas before, it's like, I'm going to sit this Bible right here. And you're going to hear this right now. Because I, I got to cut you with my words. And you're going to get a piece of my mind and not necessarily Jesus. And so, set aside and Sonia, you know, let that old sin man go more and more. And... Like you said, keep the word in your ear and your face in the book. And that's the way you overcome. It truly is. Because yeah. those things aren't important anymore. You know, getting someone back or sharing a piece of your mind or honking your horn one more time at the person that, you know, cut you off or whatever. It's just not important anymore. It's not. It's like, oh, well, maybe they're having a bad day. You know, you can, you can even make up reasons to empathize or sympathize for them. Might not be the case, but try to see the good and whatever. So that's kind of how I deal with it. It always comes back to the word. Why do you think people lack a repentant heart? Pride. They're self-absorbed. You know, folks think that they're in control. Those that don't know Jesus. And even for those that do know Jesus but aren't walking with them, they only want him sometimes when they need him. You know, it's almost like a jackpot, Jesus. When I need you, I'll go to you. You know, I'll pull the slot machine. You're supposed to work for me. Or I'll rub on the word of God, and I'm a naming and claiming. And it's like, what you claiming? What are you claiming? Claim some words in that book and live off of it. Mm -hmm. So I think pride, It all everything stems from pride. All the sin stems from pride. And right now, we are so secular in our ways, in our... And our thoughts, this nation is on a downhill spiral um, of sin because sin is normalized now. And so when it's normalized like that, even Christians, you know, look around and like, well, it doesn't seem to be so bad. You know, why do I really have to live according to this word? This word is rigorous. Yes, I'm supposed to put on clothes. Well, who am I hurting? Well, you're hurting your faith walk. That's who you're hurting. Um, so... All sin comes, I think, stems from pride. It really does. And that does keep folks from repenting. Um, they're not ready to give up their, yeah. um, their vices and their indulgences. And you don't know when your life is going to be over. So it's better to let it go and at least have a prayer's chance <laughs> of getting in, in the heaven. You got to repent while you have time, while your mouth still works, while your mind and your thoughts can be focused on him. So... Yeah, I think um, sin is too enticing for some. Yeah, sin is sin is fun. Yes, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun for a season, but until your life is out of order, completely out of order, and you're losing your mind, and and you know you don't you don't have any help, you don't have any hope because you don't have Christ. Yeah, sin is too enticing nowadays. And touching on hope, it's kind of if they don't have Christ, there's a false sense of hope. In other things. So, like, if someone's into, like, New Age or mm. whatever, they think they have this sense of peace. They think they have this sense of hope. They think everything is fine now because they have this crystal that allows them to do whatever they want. They have, which also goes back to pride. So, yeah, very interesting. You're right. I think um, in this new age mo movement, um, when you're putting your, your trust in objects, where did that object come from? The crystals, the rocks, the whatever, the stars, the skies, you know, the astrology that, you know, folks focus on. I'm a Virgo, I'm a Taurus, I'm a whatever. And it's like, where, who made all of that? There still has to be a beginning to all of that. Mm -hmm. You got to wor worship the creator instead of his created objects. Yes. And so if you're going to get into these things... Think about who created the things. And, you know, the creator is always better than the object. So oh, yeah. I think um, any way, any easy way to exist in your sin and to focus on anything other than that hard book, the Bible, you know, they're going to go for it until, you know, that rock, that crystal can't, you know, 
heal them from an illness or, um, or, or, or save them from whatever. And then hopefully they'll cry out before it's too late. But yeah, it's um, the New Age movement, another disastrous. Yeah. The Me Too movement, another disastrous movement. It's this normalization of sin all the way around. Satan is so happy right now. He has so many minions and he's confused so many people. You know, yeah. it's, it's normalized. You know, a lot of folks think they're headed to heaven and judge yourself against the book. That's all. You don't need anybody else sometimes to judge you. You got to do a little self-reflection and compare what you're doing to the Word of God. Yeah, something a lot of people tend to say is like, don't judge me or who are you to judge me? And something Josh mentioned was, well, what do they think they're going to get judged by Right at the end? And it's going to be judged by what we know, what we've, how we've behaved according to the Bible. So I would rather a friend tell me, Sonia, you, you're wrong. Um, or you shouldn't have done that, or you shouldn't have said that, or your viewpoint is wrong, that's biblically inaccurate, than to close my eyes, get to judgment day, and he say, you did all that wrong, and you didn't consult the book. So I would rather a true friend or someone that, you know, is a Christian sister or brother tell me, you know, sister, I heard what you said or what you did, and I understand your viewpoint, but let me show you why that's in error. Correct me. Mm -hmm. And to me, a strong person wants to be corrected because you want to yeah. get things right. Yeah. But in this this day and age where everybody, you know, is a God unto themselves and, you know, there's no one way and, you know, the way I did, there's nothing wrong with me. You can't get to heaven that way because you mm -hmm. can't get to Christ because you're not willing, you're not humble enough to submit to a higher authority, to the right authority. And so still lost. Yeah. <laughs> They're still lost, yeah. which is sad. Very sad. Yeah, I think that's a good point to plug in my medium post because we were talking about repentance. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, I feel like the root of transformation is repentance. And before you can be repentant, you have to have a humble heart. So that's kind of where my mind is at that. So if you want to learn more about that, go check out my medium post. I'm trying to get 200 followers on there. So it yeah. was an awesome article too. I read it and I had to follow the steps that, you know, you believe leads to forgiveness. And you're absolutely right. In order to first recognize that you need Jesus, you got to realize that there's something wrong with you. Um, and you have to say, God, you got to, it's self-reflection once again. Mm -hmm. And then you have to humble yourself, realize all this pride I have, this big ego or whatever, or self-indulgence of whatever it is. It's not enough, and you've got to ask for forgiveness and change your ways and seek God. You know, the change is turning away from everything you thought you knew and finding, dire finding direction in the, work, in the Word of God, but you've got to be humble enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And once again, that big P word, that pride, yeah. keeps folks from being humble enough to realize, I don't have it right. And the way I'm doing things, you know, is wrong. That pride, it's coming bef before that ultimate fall. And that ultimate fall is you don't make it in the pearly gates. So, and he yeah. says, I never knew you. Yeah, and that's just That horrible. breaks my heart. Yes. <laughs> I cannot, no. I think what's refreshing and also um, terrifying is if you ever look into a fire you know, we have that awesome fire pit mm -hmm. and we roast marshmallows or do whatever. But if you ever stare into a fire yeah. and you realize that hell is one tormentuous place mm -hmm. and the flames of hell are hotter and more fierce than, you know, your average backyard, you know, fire pit or whatever, that's yeah. enough to wake you up. Yeah. And you know? you'll be tormented with whatever sin you... Right. Protecting. It's, it's not yeah. just the fires. It's the pain and the agony and in the absence of God, there's no more good surrounding you. There's no more grace. And so um, people just have to wake up. There's such a fog of sin all over, you know, and they've got to wake up. And once again, programs like this, podcasts like the talking about it, um, sharing your testimony wherever you can or asking people, hey, 
you know, I'm interested in this, that, and the other, and start a conversation and make it a segue into Christ. Yeah. All roads, all conversations with, you know, strangers need to somehow backdoor into Christ, you know, especially when folks are asking for help and this, that, and the other. Hey, yeah, I can help. Um, I have an awesome ministry at my church and blah, 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 or I know about this min local ministry, yeah. and whatever. It's got to be a segue into Christ. Mm -hmm. Point them towards Christ and they won't go wrong. It'll be hard still, but they won't oh, go yeah. wrong. What do you think is a popular misconception about repentance? You can repent and continue to sin, which, you know, any making the same mistake over and over again is, of course, the definition of insanity. But I don't think that's true repentance when you continue. Now, granted, we may all have, um, you know, that thorn in our side that bugs us mm -hmm. and we battle it, but... Throughout the course of your walk, as you grow and you keep the word in your ear or before your eyes, you shouldn't continue to repeat the same mistake. And so, you know, while your repentance is ongoing, it should not necessarily be for the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a false sense of, oh, I can just tell God I'm sorry and it's going to be okay. Well, you know, don't play God. He yeah. knows your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So whether or not you're truly repentant, we may not know, you know, but he certainly knows and he's the one that counts. Yeah. So I think that's a misconception about, you know, especially in this day and age of con artists, um, that you can Scammers. con God. You can't. You can't. So his ways aren't our ways. Our thoughts are lower, much lower than his. And he knows our thoughts and our intentions. And so if you think you can con God... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> what do you think is harder asking forgiving someone or asking for forgiveness mm, that's a good question oh wow for me it will for me it's um forgiving someone i can ask for forgiveness um, cause I'm quick to say, I'm sorry, or I did the wrong thing, or I shouldn't have yelled at you or, you know, whatever I can, I can ask for forgiveness and, and, um, say, I'm sorry and mean it, but forgiving other people, um, sometimes it's difficult for me. Um, and even when I do forgive, it may be one of those, okay, I'm cautious now because this is what you did. And if I don't see any evidence of change in your behavior, then I'll be standoffish. More than likely, I'm just like, mm, okay, well, fool me once. Mm -hmm. I forgive you because we all fall, fall short of, you know, the glory of God. We all sin and fall short. Yeah. However, I'm not going to give you that opportunity again because I still see you wallowing in this place and this whatever it was. So, mm -hmm. so for me, yeah, forgiving others. Um, and I have to work on that. I really do. And sometimes it's best for me to walk away from friendships or associations rather to, to entertain what I consider nonsense or folks that just don't, they have no intentions of ever, you know, submitting to the will of God, at least mm -hmm. in my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. This is good. The evil is definitely being called good. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is the normal, normalization of sin that's prevalent, that is causing, you know, would-be Christians to turn from God because they're like, oh, everybody's doing it. Well, once again, you know, the narrow road is the road you need to be on, and you're not going to find many people on it. So, got to stay on the narrow road. Ooh, can I read this one? Go for it. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. When we choose our flesh over him, the flesh wins every time. Submit to God and we won't fulfill the lust of... I'm sure she meant the lust of the flesh. I think she ran out of characters. Yeah, I hear I you, sissy. So I got you, sissy. I know what you're writing. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the next one, Josh, because I'm sure... Okay. Turn to God with sincere repentance and faith will be saved. And you will be saved. I hear you, Team Mac. You go on and preach. Come on, Deaconess. <laughs> I see you. And you're right. Sincere repentance. And that's what we were talking about, yeah. actually. You know, God recognizes the counterfeit Christian. He knows who is, sincere, who is sincere and who is not. And so, by faith, we will be saved. But realizing we're not perfect, we have to repent, turn from those ways. But it has to be sincere. Great point, T-Mac. Mm -hmm. 